Al Roker, the famous American weather forecaster from the NBC's Today Show, has announced that he has prostate cancer, and I thought I'd take this opportunity to teach you guys all a little bit about it. I'm Dr. Rita Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon. Thanks for joining me today. Routine uh, checkup in September. Uh, turns out I have prostate cancer. Uh, and it's uh, a good news, bad news kind of thing. And good news is we caught it early. Uh, not great news is that it's a little aggressive. So I'm going to be taking some time off to take care of this. Okay, so prostate cancer can be less aggressive or more aggressive. And what exactly does that mean? Well, the way we measure the aggressiveness of prostate cancer is by three different things that we do in the workup of prostate cancer. This includes Number one, a PSA or a prostate specific antigen level. And this is a blood test. And based on the number of that blood test, you are categorized as low, intermediate, or high risk. We also take into consideration your digital rectal examination. And that is the examination where we use a digital finger to examine the prostate and we feel for any lumps or masses. When we do that examination, we can feel the size of the mass as well as if it takes up more than half of the prostate or less than half of the prostate. And that helps us categorize it as well. Lastly, we look at the results of your prostate biopsy. And a prostate biopsy gives us what's called a Gleason score. And a Gleason score ranges from six to 10, and it tells us how aggressive your prostate cancer is. So taking all the results of three of these things together, you can determine if you have aggressive prostate cancer or not aggressive prostate cancer. And I'll go through some more of these things throughout the video. One in nine men are gonna be diagnosed with prostate cancer in their lifetime. But for African-American men, that number is one in seven and is more deadly. So if you detect it early, this is a really treatable disease. And it's why I wanted to take you along my journey uh, so we can all learn together how to educate and protect the men in our lives. That's really so awesome. I'm so glad that Al Roker is sharing his experience with prostate cancer with the world because this is truly a diagnosis that has a lot of confusion around it and as he mentions is much more likely to be seen in african-american men and there are a few reasons for this so from the data we know that in african-american men prostate cancer transforms or becomes more aggressive more quickly than in their caucasian counterparts also, they have some genetic differences that make it more likely for them to get prostate cancer, specifically in certain parts of the genetic code that are responsible for prostate cancer, like variations in the androgen receptors or variations in single nucleotide polymorphisms or SNPs. And these genetic variations make them more likely or more susceptible to get prostate cancer. There's also some social differences that we cannot ignore. If you look at the difference in socioeconomic status between African-American and Caucasian male patients, they are drastically different in the sense that when you look at men over the age of 50, 90% of Caucasian men will have health insurance. Whereas if you look at the same counterpart in African-American men aged above 50 years old, only 81% have health insurance. That means there's a difference in being able to access healthcare. Secondly, there is a real inherent fear and mistrust of the medical system in the African-American population, and this is expected. And if you're not aware of the history of healthcare against African-American patients, you need to realize there have been multiple instances. Most popular is the Tuskegee experiments where African-American people were used by the healthcare system for their benefit only, for the healthcare system's benefit and not for the patient's benefit. And so there is this mistrust in African-American communities and they are less likely to go see a physician. Also, they tend to have a diet that is higher in saturated fats and a diet higher in saturated fats puts you at higher risk for getting prostate cancer. Lastly, when you compare men that are African-American to other races, when they do get prostate cancer, they have a higher mortality, meaning they are more likely to die from their prostate cancer 
than anything else. So ultimately, I'm really glad that Al Roker is speaking out about his prostate cancer because this can be a very intimate and scary disease to deal with. And it's important for people to realize that getting screened is super important, particularly if you're African American or if you have a family history or some genetic susceptibilities to cancers in your family. We love you. It was a Tuesday and uh, it was weird because I didn't physically feel any differently, but I was different because I knew that I've got cancer. Absolutely. So this is critical in the sense that you may have no symptoms at all and have prostate cancer. It's very possible that you're walking around having no problems urinating, no issues at all, and have some prostate cancer, which is why screening is so important. But there are some symptoms that should prompt you to get screening sooner rather than later. And some of these can include having blood in your urine, having urinary symptoms like needing to go to the bathroom more often, or straining to urinate, or having difficulty emptying your bladder. In more advanced cases, you could have symptoms that might include some pain kind of lower in the pelvis region or having pain in your lower back. Sometimes you can feel very fatigued, have unexplained weight loss, or have poor appetite. You see, the day prior, I had been told I had prostate cancer. It was a diagnosis I was not expecting. My doctor, a urologist, Dr. Stiefelman, you know, asked me to come in for a for follow-up. When he started, closed his doors. I always like to have these, these discussions face-to-face. -face. I was like, uh-oh. There is no easy way for a physician to give bad news. And we do get some training on how to give bad news. But at the end of the day, it's never easy to give people the diagnosis that they have a condition that is either life-threatening or has no cure. And these can be really traumatic. So yes, we do like to have these conversations face to face, not over the phone, because it's important for us to be there and understand that you are understanding what we're telling you and that you know you may need you may have lots of questions after you find out something as scary or dangerous as prostate cancer. And so we want to be there to help you and answer all your questions face to face. I feel badly because I didn't tell Deborah to come with me and she was so upset with me that she wasn't there. And I, yeah, in, in hindsight, boy, I wish I had told her to come. Man, this music is really depressing. But um, no, I completely agree that you should always bring a family member or friend or confidant with you when you're going to see the doctor, particularly when you're expecting to receive some news about a test or a biopsy, uh, or even in general, going to visit your doctor for the first time. It's important because we tend to give a lot of information, sometimes more than you're able to really understand. And so if you have someone there with you, one, they can ask ask questions that maybe you hadn't thought of, or two, they can help be your memory. So you might be like, what did the doctor say at this point in time, and what did that mean? And you can come up with other questions. Another good thing to do is if you leave the doctor's office and questions come up, write them down. So that next time you come, you won't forget about those questions, and you can ask them, and we'll be able to give you an answer right there and then. Even as this began with just a routine physical, I've been feeling great, but my doctor discovered I had an elevated PSA level in my blood work. PSA, standing for prostate-specific antigen. It's the first line of defense when detecting possible prostate cancer. So very important to understand a PSA is one, a part of our screening test for prostate cancer. And what a PSA is, is a blood test. And PSA specifically is a protein that is secreted by prostate cells. It is more commonly secreted by cells that are cancerous, but can also be secreted by normal cells. And sometimes you can see an elevated PSA in patients who have a very large prostate or recently had some sort of procedure on their prostate or had a catheter indwelling for a period of time. But this test is one of the best tests that we have as a screening tool to identify possible prostate cancer. And there's no great cutoff for this particular tool because it can vary based on your age and your race, what your expected PSA level is, and it can vary from time to time. And so we have a lot of tools in addition to the PSA that can help us identify those who are at higher risk for prostate cancer. I think most guys are 
you know, familiar with the digital prostate exam. You know, if I did some sit-ups in the morning or bent over like this, I'd probably feel 100% Moon River. Moon River. But other than that, nobody really pays attention. So the digital rectal exam is the other part of the prostate examination, which is simply that a digital exam of the prostate, uh, which is a rectal examination. And you can check out my video where I react to the Try Guys getting prostate examinations, where I go into detail about this exam. But very simply, it's an exam for us to see if there are any palpable abnormalities in the prostate, nodules, thickening, masses in the prostate that might be concerning for prostate cancer. It can also give us other information. It can tell us if your prostate is enlarged or if you have an infection in the prostate that might need addressing. So these are important things that we do when we do a digital rectal exam. So again, a screening for prostate cancer includes a digital rectal exam and a serum PSA or a blood test for PSA testing. I know I'm one of the lucky ones, especially after my PSA levels came back high. I was able to get an MRI followed up by a biopsy, confirming my diagnosis and making a treatment plan early in my disease. After you screen positive, or concerning for prostate cancer, like having a very elevated PSA or an abnormal digital rectal examination, we then have to confirm that you do indeed have prostate cancer or do not have it. And the way we do that is with a prostate biopsy, with a typically a transrectal ultrasound. Nowadays, we are also using MRI. MRI has helped us identify areas within the prostate that are more concerning for prostate cancer, so they can be targeted during the biopsy. And it's actually been shown that using MRI helps identify more clinically significant prostate cancers than the traditional standard prostate biopsy. So it's something that does help us, again, identify areas of concern, take more biopsies from that particular area so we can identify the amount of cancer that you have with a prostate biopsy. So after a biopsy, we will either know one, that you do not have prostate cancer, or two, if you have prostate cancer, what the grade of that prostate cancer Cancer is. Again, I mentioned that there are Gleason scores that you get from looking at the cells under a microscope. And depending on how abnormal those cells are from a normal cell can tell you what Gleason grade you have. And based on that, you can identify, again, your risk category for prostate cancer. And based on your risk category, you can then go on to discuss treatment options. And Al Roker is actually going on to have surgery for his prostate, which is one of the most common options for treatment of clinically localized prostate cancer. Prostate cancer treatment can include surgery or radiation or other options like cryotherapy. And these are things you need to discuss in detail with your doctor to decide what is the best option for you. I wish Al Roker the best of luck with his treatment and his journey with prostate cancer. If you'd like to learn more about prostate cancer, I have a few other videos, so check out my playlist on prostate cancer. And always remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it.